Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're continuing your journey as a Claris FileMaker Pro developer, and you're interested in learning more, this particular expert course may be of interest to you. In this video, we'll share an excerpt from our Advanced 2 course, giving you a sneak peek into one of the topics we cover. But first, we wanted to provide you a quick overview of the entire course series. This course is the fourth installment in a series of specialized courses aimed at familiarizing you and instructing you on the usage of FileMaker Pro. In the first installment course called Claris FileMaker Pro Beginner, we started things off by creating our very first app and we learned the basics of layouts, layout objects, and the different view types. We even created our first relationship. In the second installment called Claris FileMaker Pro Intermediate, we continued that journey with the introduction to calculations, scripting, triggers, looping, variables, and even subscripts. The third installment is a course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 1, where we delve into advanced topics including intricate relationships, conditional value lists, scripting, and security. Now this course is titled Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 2, where we take our advanced knowledge even further by building a dashboard which includes filtered lists and a variety of charts and graphs, each one built using a different method. We also cover transactional processing, leveraging the built-in transaction capabilities of FileMaker Pro to ensure safe and efficient scripting and data processing. We also have included sections for building for the wide area network, building for multiple users, and using multiple files. This course also finds opportunities to leverage the consumer-based artificial intelligence as a sidekick companion to your development. So to find out more, join us at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. The name of the course is called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 2. We'd love to have you continue your journey with us here at Productive Computing University. Now, on to the lesson. In this lesson, we talk about working with consumer-based AI to help us with our FileMaker development as professional developers. So what do I mean by consumer-based AI? I mean the artificial intelligence that's available through things like ChatGPT the kind of AI that you can ask a question and receive an answer. Consumer-based, meaning you don't have to be a developer to use this particular AI. This is not to be confused with using an API from OpenAI, for example, where you would directly integrate artificial intelligence between FileMaker and their API backend. For that, look for a dedicated course at Productive Computing University. That kind of in-depth training and understanding requires a course unto itself. So with consumer-based AI, whether it be ChatGPT or Copilot, Google, or any of the other flavors that have arrived since the recording of this video, we can do a few things that can make our lives easier as FileMaker Pro developers. Now, if you recall, I've already used artificial intelligence in ChatGPT to assist with a few things here in the various lessons that we've had. For example, coming up with SQL formulas that will allow us to execute SQL easier, as well as a formula to add different default fields in that XML file that we used for our default fields when a new table is created. I'd like to give you two more examples here where I find I use the ChatGPT in particular to help me along the way. One is to create sample data. So if I were to go to the PCU gaming company file and take a quick look at products, Let's say I want to add to the product sampling here, and we'll add several records to the products database. I'll need SKU, name, category, but only these types, and price. So how would we construct a prompt for that? Let me just bring up a text editor so I can look at the screen while also creating the prompt. I'll say create sample data with the following fields. Then I'll put a new line, SKU, and then a comma, name, category with options for action, adventure, role-playing, simulation, and strategy. Price, I'll just say format as CSV. And make sure the category options to pick from are case sensitive. Okay, and then finally we'll say create 25 records. All right, so that's our prompt. Copy that, come over here to ChatGPT, and paste it. I haven't actually tried this prompt, so I'm going to be just as surprised with the results as you are. 
Okay, it has created the sample data. So I'll click here to download and I'll put it on my desktop. There it is. I'll hide ChatGPT. I'll hide the prompt screen. And then I'll double click the CSV to make sure that the data looks correct before I bother even bringing it into FileMaker. So we've got the SKU. We've got the game. Then we have the category, which should be any number of options between strategy, role playing, strategy, adventure. Do we have any simulation in here? Yeah, we have a simulation. So I like the way that it scattered the data. It's not all equally distributed. We've got some weighting happening. For example, we only have a few simulations versus the others. It seems like we have more representation. I could be wrong about that. I'd have to analyze it a little closer. Then we have the price. Okay, so do we like this? The SKU might be a little long because it's adding the SKU with the serial number, and we didn't actually specify that. That's okay, because actually, now that I realize it, the SKU is auto-enter calc anyway, so we'll probably ignore this field and just bring in the data. As far as the games go, I think that's fine to have generic games. I didn't give it a choice as to what games to bring in. But this should work just fine. So we'll go ahead and do a standard import. We'll target the desktop, bring in the sample data, we'll add records, and we'll match the fields. So the SKU should go to the SKU. Actually, the SKU we decided we weren't going to do that because that'll be auto enter. The name, go to the name. The category, we'll go to the category. And the price, we'll go to the price. Okay, we'll import that, keeping in mind that we're going to keep the auto enter. And there we have it. Now to make this happy, we just need to sort by category. And now we've got brand new data that I didn't have to type by hand, all with a proper category and a name and a skew. I see here, this is sort of a bad record because the, this is actually the title. This would be the header record where it shows the name and the actual category field. And that really isn't a valid value. So let's just remove that from the equation. We should see category disappear. It did. And then if I do a show all and sort, our category should line up. And now we have brand new sample data on behalf of ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. Okay, so that takes care of that. Another example that we can use AI for as a developer is to analyze complex scripts. So over here in invoices, I have a fairly lengthy script here. This has 45 lines. Let's just see if there's anything else that comes close to that. Product report. Now this one has 56 lines, so we'll go ahead and analyze this. So what I can do is with this report drawn up, I can print. And there's a two page script that I'll save as a PDF. I'll call it script. Okay, then I'll hide that. Close all this down. Hide FileMaker, open up ChatGPT, and insert the file. And my prompt will be simply, tell me what this script does. And then it'll summarize the script in a lot more plain English. It includes the original code but then describes the original code, which can be very helpful, especially for new developers. If you happen to be training a new developer or working with someone who's trying to analyze something, this becomes a good baseline to discuss a complex script. Now, I haven't tried this to see if it would work with a subscript. Let's say you had a main script and two subscripts and you included all three PDFs. I would imagine that it could cross-reference each PDF one to the other, and then come up with a collection of the scripts plus the subscripts all in one contiguous summary. And that's just the first go at it. If we get a little bit more specific and say, include just the description, but none of the actual code, and summarize to a maximum of three sentences. Now it will 
follow those instructions and no code is talked about. Now we have the script that generates a product report within a specified date range, allowing sorting by customer or product category, handles validation, user input, and error messages, creates a new window for the report, performs a find operation, and if records are found, sorts and displays them in preview mode. The script then offers the user the option to save the report as a PDF with customizable file name and security settings. What a terrific way to document your work in plain English where an administrator can understand it. This could be great for a user guide or an administrator's guide where they might want all the rules of a given solution to be documented. You could save yourself a lot of time by incorporating these type of prompts with your PDF scripts. Now, another far-reaching option might be to save a copy as XML, put the entire file of XML, which by the way, we want to see how large that is. It's about 3.2 meg, still within reason, and upload that and say, analyze this solution in no more than five paragraphs. So it knows it's from a FileMaker database. It's talking about the file metadata, the database structure, action definitions, directories, and file access. So it's given me a clinical definition of the system. Now I'll just ask it another prompt to say, tell me the features of this application from a user's standpoint in no more than five paragraphs. And here it is. The PCU Gaming Company application from a user's standpoint offers a robust platform for managing various aspects of gaming products and related data. Users can interact with a well-organized dashboard that allows for easy navigation through different modules such as product details, customer information, and invoices, and so forth. This is pretty impressive and helps you describe things in a way that other humans, other non-developer humans can understand and perhaps appreciate. So these are just some pro tips that I've learned along the way when working with consumer-based AI and FileMaker solutions. I'm sure there are many that you will come up with on your own. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson extract from the course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced Part 2. To find out more, go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com, where you can enroll in this course along with many others training you on the Claris platform. If you are interested in taking multiple courses, it might make sense to invest in the Productive Computing University bundle package, which is one yearly price to gain access to the entire university library. As always, thanks for joining us on this video. Feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.